Hi, we're very excited to be here at Brands Hatch for round one of Thundersport GB. Today we'll be watching the young riders riding their way through the championship. Welcome to GP Racing Dream. So the winter break is over. 2016 is finally here. Coming up in today's show, we have the Pretty Super Teens coming up. Brands Hatch 2016 and the Aprilia Super Teen Challenge. They've just been out with the 450s. So here is a, a glimpse of the Aprilia Super Teens for this season. Now you'll see some regular Aprilia production motorcycles there that you might know and recognize from previous years, the 125cc production bikes. But now, new for this year, it was tested of course at Donington, the RRV 450R. Half the power of the normal 450s, an excellent idea, and you can hear one now. We're on board with Cade Verwe, number 77, just going up the inside there of number 55, Jack Scott, who's on one of the older Super Teen bikes. Now going, oh my, that's a bit close, a personal going into Druids, but this is what happened in that race. Uh, of course, riders are eligible to race on those production 125s or the new 450R, which stands for Restricted. You can get these bikes and of course then after you've used them in the Super Teens in future years you can have, of course get them de-restricted and use them as a 450. Uh, under the circumstances of where a two-stroke motorcycle seems to be going here and there I, I don't think they could have come up with a better option. Between Thundersport GB and in competition of course Ian and Myra Newton, uh, Sid and Dave and Bernie, brilliant ideas. On board here then with Max Loft Harris, Lofty Racing Aprilia 125. Max will be looking to get himself in the top three overall for this season. If you're wondering about the difference between the two bikes, well, last year, Max Cook and Connor Tag were racing at each other at Darlington Park. You couldn't split them, really. Connor Tag just got the edge on most of the occasions. There's not a lot to split them here. As you can see, Kate Verwey there. The green backing uh, should denote that it is a 450R. Of course, they are out there with the 450s as well. They started at separate times. There's Rhys Irwin he just went through. He's leading overall at the moment. Number 66, Rhys Irwin, who I'm pleased to say has had a haircut over the winter. And uh, I'm sure he'll be able to see an awful lot better now. And it's reflecting in his racing performances on the Scott motorcycles as he goes through there as uh, the leader. Then up behind him, an epic battle. Uh, was underway between the three other super team machines. On board here with Cade Verwey, who's just moved up a place there on Max Lofthouse, number 24. So this gives you a real idea as to the differences between the two bikes. They're pretty much equal all over. Down into Graham Hill Bend End. You can tell from the sound there that we were on board, of course, with a 125. That was Max Lofthouse, number 24, uh, the two stroke. But this is the race leader then. Number 66, younger brother of Keelan Irwin, who you would have seen in the 450s earlier on the Scott Racing Motorcycles Aprilia, RRV 450R. Again, I'll repeat that the R stands for Restricted. Now, just coming up there uh, on some traffic. Now, that's 67, uh, Jamie Le Mazure, and uh, he's a newcomer for this season. You can see the orange bib on there. So he will improve throughout the year. Lawrence Edgeley, that is number 97. And uh, Lawrence is a bit naughty because he's supposed to have the green backing on his bike. Uh, I'm sure he'll get a telling off from Ian Newton for us picking that up. Don't pay attention at the moment to a few of those 450s that are popping through. We're focusing now on the super teams. We're on board here with Kate Verwey. And uh, there is number 24, Max Lofthouse, who we were on board with a minute ago, just up behind. Good move there in the background. That's one of the 450s flying through to lap them. So again, try not to focus on those guys as we see them going through. It is Reese Irwin that had the lead at this stage. 
and a good battle going on for second between Lawrence Edgeley, Cade Verwey and Mox, uh, Max Lofthouse. Cade Verwey number 77 is the 450 we've been on board with. Max Lofthouse number 24 is the 125 two-stroke that we have been on board with as they head down into turn one. Jack Scott, by the way, who almost got caught up down into a Druid or up into Druids a little while ago, is still inside the top five. Number 55, Jack Scott. There he is, in fact, just going through your picture. Up ahead of number 50, Adi Behal, who's a newcomer for this season as well. Nice to see him out there. Number eight, Connor Thompson, we just got a, a quick glimpse of as well. We might as well go through the rest of the pack as well as they all seem to be heading up into Druids. We had Jody Fieldhouse there, Matt Bauer, Harry Lay, Luke Verwey, Jake Clark, and uh, here we see a decent battle. In fact, that looked really handsome, that lead earlier on in the race for Rhys Irwin, but not so. Lawrence Edgeley barging his way through then. So we have two of the 450 R's really going at it now for the lead. Look at that across the start finish line here at Brands Hatch. And both Verwey and Irwin side by side. This is Jack Scott uh, here on the last lap. Number 55 looks like he would be on for a top five or six finish, but he had a bit of company on the final laps as well. And this here is the change around. The checkered flag was out, and it was Rhys Irwin that managed to get it in the end, despite the late attraction that he was uh, gaining there from Lawrence Edgeley. It was Rhys that picked up the win. The young Irish rider took it from Lawrence Edgeley. Cade Verwey was in third place ahead of Max Lofthouse, Jack Scott, and Adi Bahal. There's the top three then. Race winner in race one, Rhys Irwin. Reese, first win. You must feel great. The first meeting of the year. Yeah, it hasn't even sunk in yet because we've been sort of improving all weekend and then just to get the win because it's not a lot of Irish riders have ever won a Super Teen race, so I'm glad now that I'm one of the very few that have. You're liking the new bike then, obviously? Yeah, we've sort of improved on it all weekend because the start, it took me a while to change from four stroke to two stroke, but now I'm really liking it. Who have you got to thank? Uh, everyone really, Mum, Dad, Keelan, Dad, Gary, Dad, Trevor, Huey Breaklines, um, Dunder Sport, Dunlap, Aprilia, Ian Newton. Uh, huge, huge thanks to James Galler and Wayne Sparrow, he's been helping me ever since I started racing. And then Trevor as well, because if it wasn't by him, I wouldn't have a bike or even be here racing. So, oh, and Motor Direct, Johnny Towers and RST. <laughs> Lawrence, so uh, second place, uh, first meeting of the year, you must be made up. Yeah, yeah. I take it that that uh, Aprilia of 450R is fantastic. Yes, yeah, really good bike. I was in the 450s, but um, moved down to the 450-50, sort of better, better move for me, and it obviously is, because, you know, I'm doing, doing better now. Struggled a bit in the rain yesterday, but managed to, um, managed to come back from 7th or 8th place on the grid. So, yeah, really happy with that. Brilliant. Have you got some people to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank all the Team Edge, uh, my dad, Dave, massive thanks to Kev for uh, mechanic the bike, uh, Casey, Johnny, Ali, thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Ian Newton for setting up the bike for me um, and changing it down to the 450-50 and um, I thank Aprilia Thunder Sport. Thank you. So Cade, I mean you had a fantastic day yesterday really in tricky conditions. And I know you're a bit concerned about today. You weren't going to sure, sure where you're going to be in the dry, but uh, you must be pleased with this uh, third place. I'm quite happy with that. It's just a uh, back runner came and pushed me wide on one of the corners and kind of separated me from the front two. But I'm happy with the third place. But you like the new uh, Aprilia RRV 450R, yeah? Yeah, definitely. It's really um, smooth and it's just, I find it better, really. Excellent. Very well done, anyway. Yeah, thanks. Join us again after the break, race two. We're at Dunlop Motorsports Technical Center in uh, the United Kingdom. And this is the place where we design, develop and manufacture some of the tires that are used by winning riders and winning drivers all around the world. All the Moto2 tires are, are made here in Birmingham. They're designed here. All the development work happens here and they're manufactured under the roof of our technical center. So the design process for the tyres uh, actually starts with modelling the tyre. I mean, we use processes such as FEA, finite element analysis, which enables us to model the tyre on the screen, um, but also to model the forces that are going through the tyre before we actually build a tyre and put it into real testing. 
The first stage of making a Moto 2 tyre is the mixing of the compound. We tend to mix compounds in batches of say 100 grams, so you'll have a recipe for each compound. Now a compound is a mixture of all the, the raw ingredients, natural rubber, synthetic rubber, silica which improves the wet performance, and some of the other uh, magic formula compounds that we add, add into there. So the way the mixer works, it's a bit like a giant food mixer. The compound goes into the machine, it's mixed in the machine, and what we see coming out of the machine is like a sticky, licorice -y kind of material, um, which is then um, stored in strips, and again, allowed to cool for a specific um, period of time, before it then goes on into the next stage, which is to have it cut into a shape that's useful for tyre building. People think that a tyre is just, just made of rubber, but there's also other materials that go into a tyre, such as fabric. And what we see here is material going through a process that we call calendaring, which is where we mix uh, materials such as fabric um, with rubber, so it sticks to the other rubber components in the tyre. And here we're having it cut into precise shapes that will then build the components in the tyre at the next stage of building. The second stage of making a Moto 2 tyre is building the, the carcass of the tyre. The process is a very labour intensive process. We can see that the operator is being guided by the lasers above him um, to get the components in exactly the right place. When we get feedback from our testing and our development, we can change the dimensions, the thickness of the materials, lots of different permutations in order to give the rider the confidence that, that, that he needs in order to, to perform on the track. The third stage in building a, a Moto2 tyre is to bring together um, the carcass of the tyre to meet the compounds that have come from the, the mixing machine. The carcass of the tyre is put onto the second stage building machines and the compounds are applied as a strip onto the onto the tyre. We see the operator being guided by, by laser guides, he's applying the, the compound into the specific areas of the tyre. The compound can go on in, in very thin strips so you can have a specific type of compound on a very specific part of the tyre in order to give the grip. We can even make asymmetric compounds here and with a multitude of different uh, tread compounds across the whole, the whole width of the tyre. When we get to the final stage, which is called moulding or curing, um, we've also got the option of how long do we leave the tyre in the oven for. Uh, we can cook it at any temperature for any length of time. So this is a stage where it not only cures all the, all the uh, materials that are inside the tyre, but it also moulds it. So the tyre that comes out of the mould is the finished product. Um, it's got the sidewall stamping on it with the Dunlop logo and the size on there. And if it's a wet tyre, it's also the place where the grooves and the distinctive grooved wet weather pattern is put into the tyre. This uh, factory, we make 250,000 racing tyres a year and they're supplied not only to, to, to MotoGP but also to other uh, major bike events. And they're the areas where we develop tyres because we're in open competition with, uh, with, with the other tyre companies and that's where we can develop some of the new constructions and compounds that give us some really useful learnings for a one brand championship like Moto2 and Moto3 in the future. We saw the first race for the Aprilia Super Teens earlier on. Let's get the highlights now for race two. Risa, when it was that was victorious earlier on on the Aprilia RRV 450R. There he is, number 66, just ahead of Lawrence Edgeley in a cracking race. Of course, once again, we ask you to try not to pay attention to the 450s that you've just seen. We're focusing on this group as they get away from the line. Can the 125 of Brilliant Super Teams get on terms with the brand new 450R? We're on board with one now. Cade Verwey again, number 77. That's Lawrence Edgeley, their number 97. And Cade, who we're on board with here, Picked up a victory yesterday, although he's about to get... Oh, he closes the door there uh, on Lawrence Edgeley going into Druid. Yeah, he got a victory yesterday, so in terms of the points, looking good. We'll get a glimpse of them after this highlights package. As it is then, uh, it's a very good start there for Jack Scott. Number 55 on the E125, on board with the XG Group Fruity K Furwe there. He makes up a couple of spots immediately. That was a really nice move there on uh, Jake Clark. He's just got past. He's got a really good start. Reese Irwin is up there again, number 66. Not too hard to pick out the differences between the 450 and the 125. Funnily enough, 
on circuit, the 450s look like the bigger machine, but in terms of weight difference, the 450s are actually slightly lighter than the 125 Productions. Here we are on board with Kate Burry again, as he just puts a move there on Connor Thompson, who it seems changes his race number every single different man that we go to. I don't know if they picked the man of a kick. That was flying, though. He's flying around the outside there. I'm guessing that they're just waiting for the one weekend that Connor has an absolute storm, and then they'll stick with that. There is Kate Burry there, number seven. 77 just being overtaken then by number eight Connor Thompson now then going through 30s the bottom of your screen we just saw a quick glimpse of him was your race leader in the super teams Jack Scott from then Max Lofthouse and this is in third uh, the Irish flagged colors on the helmet there for number 66 Reese Irwin then number eight Connor Thompson and number 77 Cade Verwey who are on board with here and Connor Thompson just went a little wide so Cade Verwey was able to capitalize there's then a bit of a gap back to Adi Behal and Lawrence Edgley Lawrence Edgley on there's a problem further back here for one of the rookies and that's Jake Clark who got off to a really good start earlier on but unfortunately out of the race here is the leader this is 55 Jack Scott from Luton on the JJ Racing Aprilia and again there really tight approach into Druids there for Cade Verwey number 77 we're on board now with the 125 of Max Lofthouse the lofty racing Aprilia he is currently in second place trying to hunt down Jack Scott, the pair of them were racing together last year as well. And now he's got the company, as you can see on circuit, by a couple of the 450 R's. That's Reese Irwin just up behind him, followed by Cade Verwey, followed by Connor Thompson. Connor Thompson doesn't have to get himself hanging off that 450 bike, whereas at the moment, just slightly tighter lines being shown there by Cade Verwey. Completely different riding styles on the same bike. In the background there, we just quickly saw as we see a change here going into Paddock Hill Bend, that's Reese Irwin up the inside of Max Lofthouse for second place. And in the background just a moment ago, we saw Adi Behal, uh, I think it was, fighting with Lawrence Edgerly. Now then, into Truids, four abreast almost there. Uh, interesting that there is Adi Behal, number 50, lovely move there from uh, the rookie, going up underneath Lawrence Edgerly, who's not having it all his own way here bearing in mind he was uh, racing for victory earlier on something's not quite right here in the second race then for Lawrence Edgeley this will be a close one this season in the championship you fear number seven there's Will Keynes he's the 450 leader about to come and lap on these guys you have seen that earlier on but what a race we've got here between Kay Furwick and Connor Thompson on board with Kay now looking back at number eight Let's see how they get on on the brakes into Paddock Hill Bend as they try and hunt down Reese Irwin. This is Max Lofthouse, number 25, and that up underneath. Oh, dearie me! Well, he wasn't underneath. That's an awful place to go off Paddock Hill Bend. Well, you'll know about that one, Max. Hopefully he's up and he's OK. And he's even got a chance just to give the tyre wall a bit of a kicking as well. We're on the last lap. Max Lofthouse won't pick up any points. Who will be victorious? It looks like Jack Scott. Jack Scott to take the 25 points massive race going on behind it looks like this is going to be a corker all season long the checkered flag went out and it was Jack Scott that took the 25 points ahead of Irishman Reese Irwin Cade Verwey in the end we were on board with him earlier on managed to hold on to third place ahead of Connor Thompson Adi Bahal the rookie finishing in a solid fifth place and Lawrence Edgerly taking sixth there's your top three then. Jack Scott the winner from Reese Irwin and Kay Verwey. Now a look at the points. Reese Irwin has it, just not a lot in it. Look at the difference between Lofthouse, Scott and Verwey there. Too early really to look at championship standings for now. We'll see how they get on at Donington Park next time. Join us again after the break for the final part. Race three for the Thundersport 500s. That's it from round one in 2016. It's goodbye from Brands Hatch and hello very soon to round two at Donington Park. We'll see you there.